or maybe in their childhood they that was a forbidden trait that they weren't allowed to show that was an emotion they weren't allowed to share maybe in their childhood sadness was was bad was was ruled as an emotion that you can't show you're not allowed to be sad hello hello everyone jesse here welcome back to the uh jesse dawson podcast obviously that's my podcast because it's me welcome back to another another episode um interesting one today interesting one number one reason why people don't care well more importantly number one reason why they don't care when you share a problem why don't people care about you why don't, you, why don't people care when you have a problem that's a big one i had to learn this one yeah have you ever felt like that i've i've definitely felt like that before I felt like no one cared no one even looked in my way in my way in my direction no one could spare five seconds to talk to me about it no one asked me if i asked me if i was okay nobody asked are you all right or did they? No, you know, when I think about it, they did ask me if I was okay. And and I said, yeah, I'm fine. And I wasn't. Maybe it was me. And then when I did say I'm not okay, why didn't they listen? They asked me these other times. And then... When I ask, they don't listen. What? Is it them? They don't want to hear it or... Relatable? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's relatable. So let's dive in. Let's do this. So first off, like I'm sure you felt like that and, and, I'm, and I'm sorry that you haven't felt heard at one point in your life and there's multiple reasons why that could be the case. First off, interesting to check in and see how you feel when those things happen, when you feel invisible or when you feel like you weren't heard or, or misunderstood or any of those, and find out what those things are that are driving that emotion. Um, once again, the cars are going past outside, so if, uh, if any noises come, we're just going to roll with the punches. So I'm sure you felt those ways. And you've got to ask yourself, what what... What's the problem that's occurring? What's the real root of the problem? Is it that I'm not worth hearing? Is it that I'm not, I've got a problem with what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm not, I'm not am, I, am I not sharing? Am, is the person I'm speaking to not hearing me? Are they misunderstanding me? Are they... Do they just not care? Am I not worth enough to care about? And do they even want to hear? Are they ready to hear it? What? And then, and then, what do I do if that's the case? What happens? How do I how do I fix it? How do I change it so that I'm not just feeling like I'm invisible all the time, and that I'm that people will actually care about what's going on in my life? Like, what? How do I fix that? So, a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack. So let's start off. I'm sure you've all thought it was yourself. You, you thought it was you. Is it me? Is it me? Am I? Is there something wrong with me? I went to, like, it could be your best friend. It could be your best friend. It's like I shared this thing and then they just brushed it off. Like they just moved on. Like I didn't even say it or they ignored it or, or they just said, oh, you shouldn't feel like that and then moved on. And, and why did that happen? You know, is there something wrong with me? Am I broken? You know, is it weird for me to say these things? I, I feel like I'm not enough. I don't matter. Maybe no one loves me. Maybe I'm not, not, I'm not there's not enough here to, of me to care about. But, and, and there are some aspects that maybe it is you. Maybe it is yourself. But we'll get into that. But maybe it's not. Maybe there are emotions that are valid. And maybe that you're, you're feeling that and knowing that that's true for you and rock on it is true for you maybe the emotions that are coming from a place 
from your past that are triggering these feelings. So when you're not heard from your friend or from a colleague or from whoever it is, it brings up things from when your parents didn't hear you or from when people were, you, know, you were ignored or whatever it is, right? Maybe that's where it's coming from. And that in this instance, you just didn't feel heard enough. Or in this instance, there was some criteria that wasn't met to make you feel heard and it was triggering that past trauma. That's stuff you've got to work out yourself. I can't be the judge of that for you. You've got to know that and you've got to find those things. Sometimes our criteria for being heard and for, for, for knowing someone cares is so high, is so high. It's, it's way too high. The bar is set beyond any sort of normal expectation and no one's ever going to meet that bar if your expectations of being heard are too high. And how do you know if they're too high? That's a good question. You've got to actually figure out when I, when to, to know someone cares about me, what needs to be present? What's this, 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 list it off. List off, I need to be, they need to have a hold eye contact. They need to reply back to me and I have to know that they've understood what I've said or I need to just feel understood or they just have to sit there in silence while I talk and I know that they're listening. You know, whatever it is. And then you gotta have, you know, rules around how those are met. And you gotta ask yourself, can the average person hit these benchmarks? <laughs> you know, can they actually achieve this when I have something to share? And then, do they know they have to do that? Because they might not, not have learned the way you learned how to be heard when you were a kid, when they were, were younger and learned how to be heard. Maybe they never learned how to, how to hear somebody. Maybe their childhood has always been about them. And then you come with your thing and they don't know how to handle that. So it's up to you to, to express that to them. I know this is, once again, we're in deep. I'm recording for seven minutes. <laughs> and I'm hitting some deep trauma triggers. Trauma triggers. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Um, so sometimes, sometimes it is you. Sometimes it is me, you know. It's me. Say, okay, so my my expectations of others are too high and I need to actually lower that down and know that I am being heard and that I'm actually not accepting that I'm being heard or that I'm making this excuse up so that I don't have to worry about actually being heard and dealing with this thing because I'm trying to perpetuate the same hurt and trauma from when I was younger. I'm kind of going gentle on this one because it's it's a bit it's a bit uh, it can be a bit sensitive. This is a regular thing I deal with all the time with many people in my world and through coaching. So sometimes it is it is you. So you got to adjust those expectations, and sometimes you're just looking for attention, and it's not necessarily that that being heard is the solution. I mean, you've got to be honest with yourself though on what that is. That's not me calling anybody out there. That's you. You've got to figure that out to find out if what you call being heard is possible and if the person that you're talking to knows how to hear you. So they're the two things because until then, you being heard is just a, is a something in your mind and no one can mind read. So you, that's your responsibility. But a lot of the time, saying all of that, a lot of the time it isn't you. Even with all of what I said there, knowing that Sometimes it can be us and and feeling like we're broken or something's wrong with us or we're not worth hearing or that we're invisible. All those things might be true for you in that moment. And sometimes we need to just have a rain check and you say, okay, well, are my expectations too high? And you say, no, okay, they're not too high. They actually are how to be heard. All I need is someone to sit there for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes with me. I need to like regurgitate all of my crap that I'm going through these feelings, this problem that I have and tell them. And then they just have to sit there and say, you know, that sucks. That's really crap. I'm sorry that you're going through that. Is there anything I can do to help? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. That's a pretty, pretty fair thing to expect. Um, and you say, yeah, that's fine. And I'm, I'm not saying what is fair and what isn't. That's just the example I was giving. And then you say, so it's not me that is the problem here. I'm, my expectations are realistic and my response is realistic to it. Why don't the people around me care then? 
Sometimes it is them. Sometimes, sometimes the uh, person you're sharing with is not the right person to share with. Sometimes they're the completely wrong person to share with. And sometimes they are the right person to share with. And again, you haven't explained for them how to hear you, to, to them how to, how to hear you. And sometimes they're just not ready to hear your problem because they've got their own problems. Because everyone's got their own problems. Everyone's got their own crap going on. And to heal from our problems, we need to voice them into the world to know that we aren't going to be, that it's okay to feel these ways, to know that we're not broken and crazy and all the things that come with our brains and making up these meanings in our life. So you need to have the right person to share with as well. So maybe they're not the right person to share with. Maybe they're not ready to hear the things that you're sharing. So it's not that they don't care. It's not that they don't, because maybe they do. Maybe they do care. Maybe they care a lot. But they have never been shown how to care, like I mentioned before. Maybe they've never known how to be with somebody who's upset or with a problem. Or maybe they are just trying to, they, they are, they're, they're in solution mode and they're trying to solve. You know, a lot of men are culprit of this one trying to solve the problem to move it on and sometimes you need to be heard so again they may, they have, may have no skill set to be able to help you with your problem they may they may have a skill set um, and they're not doing it the way you need it to be done so you've got to remember sometimes it isn't us sometimes it is them and then the biggest one when it comes to maybe it's them is that sometimes as I said they're not ready to hear it because they've got their own problems going on and they haven't dealt with the thing you're sharing with them. Or maybe in their childhood, they that was a forbidden trait that they weren't allowed to show. That was an emotion they weren't allowed to share. Maybe in their childhood, sadness was was bad, was, was ruled as an emotion that you can't show. You're not allowed to be sad. You can only be happy all the time or anything else but sad because their parents couldn't handle it. And then you come to them with your sadness, with your problem or, or whatever it is, and that particular thing they haven't learnt to handle so you bring <laughs> you're literally bringing them like a uh, potential like like death straight to their door you, you, you're literally pressing the trigger button when you share your problem with them and sometimes we need these things to be shared with us so that we can grow but a lot of people don't know that so when you share it you have to see if it lands over in their court and how they how they take it and is it could be that they're too self-focused as well and that they don't see it at all. It could be that they haven't, they're haven't, not ready to deal with that themselves yet. They don't know how to deal with it or they don't know how to do, how to help you feel heard. So there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of stuff there. So let's go one at a time. <laughs> uh, you're more into those. So the one I mentioned there right at the end being that they might be too self-focused. So you could be sharing to the wrong person flat out, like I mentioned right at the beginning. That could be someone who is extremely self-focused, like 90% self-focused on, on them. You know, someone who's just brinking on the borderline of narcissism. Never share with that person. They don't even want to know that you have a problem. They want to know how great they are. They want to make it all about them. So you've brought, you just brought them a problem and they're just going to take it and be like, <laughs> chump, Tell me how great I am. Tell me how good I am. Or, or they'll minimize your problem. Be like, that's not even bad. You should hear this and tell you a story about them. I used to be a culprit though. And then you don't feel heard. You feel hurt. You feel like they don't even care at all because now they're just talking about themselves and you're sitting here with a problem like, thanks, dick. I have uh, I came to you with a problem and now you're just making everything about yourself. Like, uh, do I even matter? Am I even, am I even in your world right now? And it doesn't even matter what they say. And then you try and talk yourself like, oh, it's okay, it's just me, I'm broken, they're, they're, the, they're right, and, blah, blah. and you just end up in a, in a whirlwind of, of shit. So that person, never share to them. Get rid of them out of your life, in fact, because they're not worth having around. Then there's the, they don't know how to do it, which I mentioned before, so you need to explain to them, this is what I need you to do. And especially if it's a partner, especially if it's a partner, explain to them what you need them to do so that you can be heard, so that you can feel like you're connected to somebody the other one being 
when you share it, they're not ready to hear it. Actually, no, we'll save that one to the last. Maybe when you, when you share it, they don't know how to help because they haven't been taught. So again, you, you show them, you show them that. Um, and then other times they, they, they don't know what to do with the uh, emotion and they have to deal with it. So then you have a talk about it and you see where, they, where it hits with them. So again, you should, so coming back to that last one now about how they, they might not be able to handle it. You share the thing. Now you've got to know that in your mind, when you go to share a problem that you have intrinsically within you, your, your world, Everyone else has got their own version of the world. Right? We, as far as consciousness is aware and everything psychology is concerned, we actually don't even know what the real world looks like because everyone's only got their own version of it. So no one will ever know what real reality looks like. And their version of their world is very valid to them, just like yours is for you. And your problem you share, it hits their world, and then you need to gauge, knowing, knowing that when you share it, it could be interpreted or misunderstood or, 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 or diminished or whatever it is. You have to know that you could share it and that could happen. But that's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because it gets you can gauge the, the person, the character of the person you're with to see where they're at. And if, they, if, they, if it hits and they don't run away, but they don't know what to do with it, then you know, oh, I've got to teach this person how to handle my problem and, te- and so they can, they can assist with helping me be heard. And then, if they if it hits them and they just they they deflect off of it, they change the subject, they move it over to them, they they run away, they whatever it is, you know that there's some stuff going on there, and that maybe it isn't you at all. Maybe you're perfectly fine. You're a normal human being that actually does matter, and that you are worthy of being cared about. You're just sharing to someone that doesn't know how to do it, and then they've got their own shit going on, and that they they actually might even care, and they just haven't dealt with that either. So then you're getting the courage and the guts to share it, be like, oh, here it is, bang. And then they, they're they not quite there yet, but they still care. They're just not ready to deal with it. And that's up to you to be able to know that that's what's happening for them. And it's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. Sometimes that's the case though. So like, what do you do about that? What do you do about that? What do you do about someone, someone that's fully self-focused? Fuck them off. That's what you do about them. Don't even worry. Someone who doesn't know how to how to help you or doesn't know how to help at all, teach them. Teach them how to do it. Teach them how to do it for you. And then ask them, how do I make sure you heard? Open it up for discussion. Create a better, a deeper relationship. When, when shit goes down, how do you help that person? How, do, how are they heard? How do they feel heard? And if you can write it down, then you know what to do. And then sometimes it's going to be more than that. You know? Sometimes you're going to have to be a little bit flexible. And you might have to repeat the process a couple of times with them. And then lastly, if they don't know how to handle the problem, then you know you just can't share those things with them. You just need to find somebody else to share that with. Or you become more emotionally aware, emotionally intelligent, your EQ, heighten up and say, I'm sorry, did my problem just trigger something here? Even though you've got your own problem, sometimes you just need to check in and say, was that too much for you? And then get their response because it might be too much for them and they don't want to run away and and make you feel abandoned because they couldn't deal with it because they're not ready. They'd be like, yeah, I'm just not ready to face that just yet. I don't know how to help you because I'm dealing with that too. And it's like, wow, well, maybe let's do it together. It opens up a whole nother world of conversation. This one's been real gentle, I've just noticed. Went a lot more gentle than I thought it was gonna be. So that's the reason why people don't care about you. Oh, I had a hiccup there. <laughs> that's the reason why people don't care about you. Or, or you feel like people don't care about you when you share a problem. So how do you fix the problem? when you are in, because when you, when you find out that you know maybe that you just needed a bit of dialogue around it and you actually have a really great friend and they're willing to go on the journey with you, great. That's what you do with that. You just continue on the journey and, and go deeper into the relationship, the friendship, the, the whatever it is. But what if you don't have that person? Or if that person isn't there? ready to be shared with. What if they're that person that says, no, I'm not ready to deal with that and I don't want to go into it. 
And if you kept trying to push that on, they're likely to push you away. They're likely, likely to back up your own belief about you that you're not worth caring about and leave you. Which is the worst case because they could have actually just been a good friend. You know, you just, you just know you can't share that stuff with them. There's like a, there's a boundary. It's like, okay, well, this is where it is. And then one day they might share it with you and you're like, oh, they've progressed and then excellent. But until then, what do you do? What do you do? You either get rid of the person altogether because they're not worth having around, i.e. a very self-centered person that's bringing on narcissism, dangerous individual, or you learn that that's not a place that you can go with them and you know, you need to be over here. You need to go this way and be over there with them. And that's fine. You might have activity friends that I need to do things with and you don't really talk about the deeper stuff with because they can't really be on that level with you. And that's fine too because you have people in different areas of your world. Now, if you can't find anybody else, so the best thing to do would be joining a group or some sort of community or find somewhere in another thing that you have in common and explore the people there and see if there's anyone that you can connect with on a deeper level there. And of course, you've got to nurture the friendship. Uh, but meeting new people is always good. It's always good to meet new people. Um, and then you find another person and go through the, the motions with them. And maybe they're going to be more healthy and support you in your when you're in trouble and, and also for your wins and all those things. And that's great. But you, what if you don't even have that? What if you don't have places where the people that like the things you like are worth sharing with? Because they got their own stuff, you know. They're just like you know, possibly a, a, a clone of the existing scenario where you can't share with them, or they're even worse than than the original. Um, I know that's the case for a lot of things with me. Like I've got a lot of hobbies that generally the reason I got into them in the first place was because I had insecurities, and it, it's the the crowd that hangs around that activity are a, a person that's hurt in a particular way, and you and you come together as a little as a little group. So I had lots of lots of activities and hobbies and things that I did that actually were full of really dysfunctional people. And these days, if I want to do that activity, I know that I'm just going purely for the activity because I enjoy it. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm more whole as a person. And their problems are their problems and mine are mine. And we just have a laugh within the activity. That's cool. But they're worse off than people in my life in, in, you know, in a normal day. So sometimes you don't have those hobbies and those communities around you that you can actually pull those resources from. So then what do you do? Bloody good question. You go to a diary. You go to somewhere, some sort of creative aspect of you that you can express the thing in a way that is either accepted or in a way that's constructive. So for me, diary is brilliant. And I'm not even writing to anybody. I'm not writing to me even. I'm just getting my pen out when I go through some real tough stuff. I've had, I've had the same diary for a lot of years for this, this particular diary because I haven't had to write in it too many times you know, over the couple of years that I've had it because it's, it's for when shit gets bad, when it's like really tough. And I, I know that I'm still scared about sharing this to somebody or um, I don't have anyone in my world at that moment that I can share to straight to the diary because then I can at least start languaging it and I can start writing it down and processing some of the information, even if it's just a diary. And then when I'm, when I'm ready or someone is there that I can share to is around, I can then go ahead and take the risk of sharing and learn that it's okay and learn more of myself. But until then, Irying it up. So I'm writing in there like absolute gibberish. Doesn't even make sense. Makes zero sense. It's just like crazed lunatic writing. And I, sometimes I've actually read back some of my reasons like, oh, that was a bad day. I remember that one. And it's just hysteric because I haven't even got to learn like a, a, like a, like a language. I haven't got a, a grip on what I'm trying to even say yet. And sometimes you need someone to sit there with you and while you work it out, while you're just saying gibberish and, and not making any sense and, and they just need to be with you. And there's only a few slow people that can do that. So, so again, bringing back to the original point, it's not that they don't care about you. And sometimes it is, sometimes it is, right? Sometimes people don't care and they're not cool, right? I can, it's a whole other thing. Just let them go. <laughs> let them go, start a life over this side. Um, and some part, but most of the time they do care about it. They just don't know how to care about you. And that's an epidemic in these days because we technology has advanced us so much 
and has also cut us off so much in the world. And we're, we communicate even less now than we ever have. And especially my generation and younger, we don't even know what's going on. Terrible. So to the diary we go. <laughs> and yeah, just get it down. Get it out of your head and onto the page and start sharing the problem. And then when you're ready, you can actually then go ahead and share it. You have better language around it and you can get a more concise <sighs> verbal diarrhea of the experience out <laughs> and uh, it, it helps it helps a little bit at least and that's a great place to start or go for a creative endeavor write music now, I did that for a very, very long time I wrote music produced music to express the things that I wasn't allowed to express through words or emotions just through music and now I love all kinds of music because of it through art painting creating heck like build, fabricate some stuff in a metal workshop. I don't know, I'm just making things up now. Like just express, get some of this out and put it into something where people can be like, wow. Because sometimes the appreciation of a creative art and what you put into that can be enough to be like, I'm seen. And that can be, that can be a thing. Don't get addicted to that because that's really bad too. But it's, it's a start. It's a start. And then you can start to reach out and you might build higher quality people through those activities as well, through through that creative act. And you might actually find that people in the woodwork that have always been there the whole time that you never knew you could trust in that way and you could never knew you could share. And it's always a risk to share too. So you've got to take that risk and, and find out and you never know until you do. But it's not. Sometimes it is. Let's recap. <laughs> Sometimes it is. The person you're sharing with that doesn't care. Sometimes they don't know how to care. Sometimes your expectations of them are massive. And sometimes, I, I had it, it's just gone. It just left my brain there. <laughs> and sometimes it's not you at all. Sometimes your expectations are fine. The person you're sharing with is wrong. Sometimes your expectations are fine and the person doesn't know how to care. Sometimes, they're, your expectations are way too high and you're still sharing with the wrong person uh, but, they're, but they're too high and no one can can meet the bar of, of knowing that you're to show you that you're heard so you need to pull that bar down or address what it is that you need in you to have that bar so high like how, how come someone has to go so high to meet that need of you being heard like it's like you know <laughs> on the drama scale why are you a 12 out of 10 when 10's the top, why did you go to 12? Ask yourself those questions. These are hard-hitting questions. And they'll change your life once you get them down. They're, they're, they're quite good. So I trust that was useful. I say this every time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, any, if this is you know resonating with you. You have to let me know. I don't know. I have to take the risk of sharing all this and sitting down and, and bang and then putting it out in the world to be absolutely not heard by anybody. So I'll lead by example. Now you let me know what you thought of this video, what you took out of this. Tell me three things that you loved out of it, or if you don't, if you, and you still want to contribute, maybe share it to someone who needs to know this. Give it a like. Leave in the comments the best kind of kind of way I reckon, because it gives me feedback. But it, do more, do more. Like and subscribe and and uh, follow, share comment pick one pick two of them still a whole bunch of them and let me know how you guys went with this and you know the, the different pace of, of this episode sometimes they're going to be hard and fast sometimes they're going to be real soft and slow and and taken with care and i would like to hear what you what your thoughts are so leave me a comment message me do whatever it is enjoy the rest of your morning your your uh, lunch, <laughs> your afternoon, your evening, your night, your sleep. Enjoy your sleep. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. And we'll talk about whatever we talk about then. I didn't do the outro properly. I didn't say the name of the podcast. It's embarrassing. What are you still doing here? This has been the Jesse Dawson podcast. You happy?
You guys expecting something? <laughs> it's, this is the end. This is it. This is the end. We, did, we walked through the beautiful garden of care in that episode and now we're here. I screwed up the outro. All right, are you happy? Happy, is that, what you want? is that what you want from me? All right, let's try it again. This has been the Jesse Dawson uh, podcast. I'll see you in the next one. Like, share, subscribe, comment, give me some feedback, comment what you loved about it, whatever it is for you, whatever flavor you wanna go, whatever way you wanna go, fun with me. I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy your morning, evening, afternoon, night, and your sleep. <laughs> All right, I'm out. I'm not afraid to